Bueno, nuestra siguiente eh, expositora es Carolina Mateluna. Profesora de Estado en enseñanza media, mención idioma inglés de la Universidad de Chile y magíster en la enseñanza del idioma inglés y lingüística aplicada en el King's College London. Actualmente está cursando un doctorado en educación Chesum en la Universidad de Bristol y ella nos presenta The Rapport Management Framework Spencer OT 2000-2008 in the analysis of politeness and apologizing in children's Spanish. Hi, how are you? Well, I'm presenting in English because um, I have the abstract in English. <laughs> That's the reason why. So, well, I'm Karina Mateluna. I'm an EDD student at the University of Bristol um, on my third year and I'm doing my data collection now in Chile. That's why I'm here in Chile <laughs> now, I'm not in Bristol. Um, and today I'm presenting this um, EDD research assignment. So I'm presenting basically the results of this uh, work and which is called the Report Management Framework in the Analysis of Politeness and Apologizing in Chilean Spanish. Okay. So, well, the aim of the study was to analyze the speech act of apologizing in Chilean Spanish beyond traditional approaches to politeness, beyond the Brown and Levinson's models of politeness because it has been highly critiqued because of its claim of uh, universality of politeness across cultures and, well, because of lots of different reasons. Um, because it also focuses solely on the hearer and speaker, so it's mainly like a linguistic utterances and not in interaction. And I was um, interested in a broader framework that would take account of social variables and a broader framework, right? So that's how I came about um, the report management framework by Helen Spencer Oti. Uh, she has written like several books, like 2000, 2005, 8, and well, she defines report as the relative harmony and smoothness of relations between people. Uh, report management refers to the management of mismanagement of relations between people, right? So it's more than the utterances alone, it's more the interaction, right? And and she builds on the concept of face, which is kind of the traditional model, but she refines the concept. She distinguishes between quality and social identity, uh, whereas the former refers to the desire for positive uh, evaluation in terms of our personal qualities, um, competence and ability. Whereas the social identity phase is more is uh, a desire to be acknowledged and that people uphold our social identities and roles. So, in that way, she adds a social layer to to kind of an approach to politeness or rapport, how she calls it. And well, she distinguishes between equity rights and association rights and where the former ones refer to that we are entitled to be treated fairly and not to be imposed, which is similar to the traditional model as well, and the association rights, which are entitled, we are entitled to an association with others, right? So in that way, that's kind of different because it's not just about the interlocutors themselves, but more about the, the interactions and in-group variables as well. Um, we also have interactional goals, well, because again, it's um, some kind of relational uh, interactions and it's also a, a focus on the negotiations and the value judgment that uh, interlocutors make, right? And well, so I also wrote about a, a kind of literature review of apologizing 
Well, in terms of Spencer OG and other authors, it's a post-event speech act in the sense that some kind of offense or violation of social norms has taken place. And just to understand some of her concepts, uh, if an offense may infringe a third party's equity or association rights, for example, when someone receives a delayed package, his or her rights are, as a consumer, have been infringed. So therefore, the act of apologizing has the potential to restore the equilibrium, right? So, but she says that it's more than beyond that, it's a far more complex in actual interaction since people make judgments based on their own value systems, context variables such as the type of activity, the development of the interaction, roles and conventions. So it's not just a one-to-one -one relationship. There are more variables to, to bear in mind. Um, <clears throat> so, well, that's a literature review in Spanish. So we've got like several authors that say that Spanish speakers tend to target positive politeness as opposed to the, the theory of Brown and Levinson's that uh, talk about the universal negative politeness for apologies. I'm taking from going to lots of things because of the time, right? That's why I'm not really talking about politeness the theory. And well, in Latin American Spanish, uh, a lot of authors like which are, have also studied like Chilean Spanish have found that uh, speakers tend to give explanations and excuses and delay apologies instead of a direct apology, um, or they may prefer negotiating with the speaker, with the hearer. Um, there are some certain other factors like social distance that plays a role, the severity of the fence, and some other strategies. So my data, I took my data from a documentary series called Proyecto Cero, which is a Chilean TV show, but um, where like small business entrepreneurs are given some kind of support to boost their business. Um, which are basically like family business, right? Small business. For me, this kind of this data is kind of semi-authentic data. I, I know that it's not naturally occurring data because people are being recorded. And but I don't like role plays or like this kind of completion tasks, things like that. So, and I watched these programs and I thought that, well. It's just like real life. I mean, I, I know that they have scripts and editing, but it was much better than role plays. Uh, so I've got three samples, people like uh, middle-aged people from Santiago, uh, middle class, and they're basically from Patronato and Recoleta. Um, so, well, I'm, I'm going to just use like kind of linguistic or more similar to the traditional model like categories, uh, just as a foundation. Then I will build on the more discursive and, and context variable uh, analysis. So in line with the, with the previous uh, studies, we do tend to give more explanations, delay apologies, give lots of uh, justifications or excuses, well, this, are, this is part of my data, then you will understand the examples, right? So it says, well, si es que tuvimos empana, tuvo una cervecita nomás, evasion of responsibility, like by asking redundant questions, uh, minimizing defense, para que no color, and denying responsibility, el se fue solo, <laughs> and explicit expression of apology, right? So that's the last one. <laughs> um, then, in terms of linguistic features and apology strategies, uh, well, a lot of mitigation. Um, we are, well, you know the diminutives, like cervecita, like hedge expressions, like no sé, downtoner, like eke, uh, pillars, in-group markers that address like positive politeness, so you include the hearer in your apology. And distraction from the fence that was quite particular from this data, uh, humor, right? Like, well, the examples are quite funny, but <laughs> um, 
So it's like distraction from the fans and mitigating a lot, right? And so well now I've got more to this broad framework, um, which I call the report management dynamics. So the first uh, thing that I found out is the problem of roles, right? In the first example, we've got, well, I'm just going to give you some background information. It's a family that uh, works in Padronato and they sell clothes and they need to boost their business, right? Because they're losing money. So they are preparing a, um, what did they prepare? I forgot. Uh, a fashion parade. And so, and, and they arrange for a tent, but it's delayed. So the, the owner of the business is uh, getting impatient and suddenly the suppliers arrive with a tent, right? So that's the, the kind of dialogue that is produced, right? So you've got the participants, the father, with the F, the workers one and two, which are the suppliers of the tent and the daughter. So they say, well, this is Spanish because we don't want to trust to do it in Spanish on, and English. So they say, ¿qué pasó? No, es que no, no, como no, no, pues si tengo que hacer estos dos perritos, si ustedes tenían que llegar a las nueve, no es. <laughs> ah, está apurado. <laughs> ¿Cómo estoy apurado? Si sí, es que estuvimos en pana, pero es lo que tenéis que decirme nomás, porque no tenéis para qué enojarte, o flaco, sí o no. ¿Qué pasó? So that's the dialogue, right? I'm doing this very quickly, right? <laughs> Because of the time constraints. Um, so uh, you've got a problem of roles. Right, because um, in line with some other, some previous work, oops, in line with some previous work as well, uh, you've got that um, you've got the, the owner of the business and the supplier. So you would expect that he would at least would say, "I'm sorry," or "I don't know." But instead of that, he just like gives exp explanations and justifications. So. And, and, and in line with our previous work, you've got in some service-like encounters, uh, you've got a problem of negotiating like a professional identity. The, the sales representative or the service representative uh, are kind of reluctant to acknowledge responsibility, right? So that's why they, they won't apologize directly, okay? And another phenomenon is this maybe some kind of studio symmetrical uh, situation because again this is a very informal uh, environment in Patronato is a very popular area so where maybe informal interactions prevail over like formal meetings so that's why maybe this kind of social distance is not is not present right. Um, also, maybe the challenging behavior of uh, of the speaker may also uh, act like a challenging the hearer, and he may feel attacked. So that's why he wouldn't come out with an apology, right? Um, well, that's the second example. I'm not sure if I've got enough time. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So uh, another important factor in in, in this framework is like the influence of more participants and that's what I found out in another example of the same TV show and here this is a family that works together, it's a couple a wife and husband and they've got a motorcycle repair shop and they also work with the with the guy's uh, brother and a friend so this scene is that uh, the woman, the female entrepreneur, is pregnant. So she gets home and she's angry because she had a checkup, a baby checkup appointment, but his husband, her husband, sorry, didn't show up. Right. So that's the the dialogue, right? So she says, um, "Ah, well, cómo está? Mal estamos. Pues todavía estoy esperando que me llame. Vengo del doctor. No me voy a acompañar." ¿Y cómo te fue? Y está aquí, más encima los clientes afuera, ¿dónde? Que yo traje una cervecita. That's the brother, right? The B is the brother. Uh, es que yo traje una cervecita, si era para relajarnos. No, me, no, me imaginé que eras tú. Quedamos en algo, si era una cerveza, quedamos en algo, ¿no? Eh, hora de trabajo es hora de trabajo, entonces no estamos respetando acuerdos. Entonces yo tampoco voy a respetar los míos. 
and she she does <laughs> this kind of gesture like it's enough and um pero para qué le pido tocolo no no vemos no vemos so here like the influence of more participants especially in a in a quite manly environment where you've got three men and just one woman may also influence that he would delay his apology and he wouldn't just apologize like just give justification and excuses right um so you've got uh, this phenomenon of camaraderie again among men right um so um and then what these tv shows have is that they have follow up comments so where you can also uh, analyze the value judgments of the interlocutors um so here we can also find out that for the brother and the female entrepreneur the the, the previous dialogue had quite different consequences all right and because the brother says estamos tomando una cervecita y mi cuñada se enojó así que estoy tratando la la ceja y suspirando mejor hay que retirarse voluntariamente y se ríe and the female she says well la verdad me molesta la situación porque no no se respetan los parámetros y siento que que está jugando en vez de sacando adelante nuestra familia so here you can see how they two uh, attain different values to the situation. So that's the report management framework as well. That's an important uh, feature of it. So you can analyze the, the, the judgments of the speakers, of the interlocutors, right? Uh, so well, I'm just going to skip the other examples. Um, so the discussion, well, there are some things that I didn't have time to discuss, but well, in line with some previous work and maybe Latin American Spanish and Chilean Spanish, um, we tend to delay or avoid apologies and just um, by means of explanations, justifications or excuses, right? And so the offenders rather negotiate the expression of apology by using justifications or excuses to, to evade responsibility. Um, that was thus in line with some other theories that I also uh, wrote and that I included in my, in my research, which is like kind of the by Puga and um, yeah and the use of humor and camaraderie that I mentioned before well so that's all I guess and that's references thank you so sorry for rushing um, have you got any questions Bueno, el, el, 
Sí, en el tipo de estrategias que de, hablé, eh, que se toman también como de, de, de estudios anteriores, eh, se habla de que está todo este, este tipo de estrategias previas a, o si es que no hay alguna disculpa, y esas son las que hablé, bueno, viene a la rápida, eh, que son las explicaciones, justificaciones, excusas, o evadir la responsabilidad, o minimizarla, o simplemente rechazarla. Entonces, preparatorias o no preparatorias de claro, de entonces se, 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 se clasifican como otro tipo de estrategias de o sea, no viene a reemplazar una disculpa pero eh, son una alternativa o sea, que no, no, hay una, no, no hay una disculpa real como el discúlpame que en realidad o sea, el tema de la disculpa le llega la disculpa probablemente tal pero también todo aquello que puede venir antes de la disculpa claro. todo aquello que puede venir antes de la disculpa Claro. Sí, 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 sí. el análisis y revisar todo, eh, cómo se disculpa a la gente de Chile uh -huh. en, en la situación de disculpa y todo eso se planea o se hace como cierto análisis o comparación quizá no sé de qué dice eso de los chilenos de la idiosincrasia por ejemplo el que usemos el humor el que no digamos disculpa hasta último recurso no sé si eso sí. es parte del trabajo y Sí, fue la parte, lo que pasa es que por el tiempo tampoco lo pude incluir. Por eso, lo por que eso. lo borré, después me, me di cuenta que lo borré así y dije, bueno, oh, porque ya me estoy pasando mucho y lo borré. Y claro, yo había, yo había incluido a Puga, que es una autora chilena que habla como de todo ese tema de, de la evasión en Chile, que tiene que ver con este sentimiento como de extrañamiento que hay y toda una sociedad súper jerárquica en donde hablamos de usted y tú, entonces siempre está ese miedo de fingir un poco el territorio de la otra persona y no perder mucho mi face, que como el, el término en inglés, eh, entre no infligir al, al otro por miedo y yo tampoco perder mi, 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 mi face. Que todo. Entonces tiene que ver un poco con, con eso, eso es lo que habla ella y yo lo, y yo lo relacioné a, a, a un poco a, a la explicación del por qué se va de tanto. Y claro, y por qué a lo mejor en otras, pues se encontró aquí en Uruguay también, pero es, es como en, en cierto contexto como de, de, de workplace, más que nada. Pero acá yo lo encontré en todas las situaciones, porque tenía otro ejemplo y en todas era muy, muy, muy repetitivo. Entonces, claro, encontré un poquito de, de teoría de eso y ahí lo explica como de esa forma. Es por una sociedad que está muy estatificada y que hay mucha jerarquía, entonces como no, so, no, no, no sobrepasar al otro, yo tampoco eh, perder mi estatus, mi puede ser. Y estar siempre así, como porque siempre se toma, se trata de evitar todos los temas tabú, con los diminutivos, así que qué bonito y otras palabras que y nunca hablar directamente entonces yo creo que ahí también va el tema de por qué eh, no, 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 no usamos la, la disculpa directamente sí. bueno le agradecemos su participación un aplauso por favor